I'd like to call the meeting of the uh, Public Works and Safety Committee together um, on Monday, May 15th at 5.30. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. <clears throat> Alderman Kubaki here. Alderman Hamill here. And Alderman Terrence is not here. So we do have a quorum. Statement of public notice. The meeting was posted and distributed on May 11th. Okay. Scott, would you give us a status of projects, please? Sure. First one is Great Water Lines. So we are in the punch list kind of phase. They have to have all the punch list items done July 1st. So anyone related with anything with Great Water Lines, both private and public, uh, have got, reached out to us. We are working through those, and we're hoping to wrap everything up along the whole project corridor in Muskego by July 1st. So, oh, can you go to the microphone so it's all recorded? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Eileen. <laughs> Yeah. It's on. Yep. Okay. Are we, is the city or anybody going to do anything to cover up those ugly pipes that are sticking out? So again, this is part of the punch list items. It's it's been very discussed heatedly and hotly in the last two weeks. So we are working through those um, discussion issues right now. Is the best way to put it. Okay. We're all well aware of those situations, and they okay. just a bunch more just popped up in the city. Oh yes, and they are quite ugly. Okay, thank you. Yep. That's all my report on Great Water Alliance, and now it's the police chief update. Good afternoon, gentlemen, ladies. Uh, first and foremost, uh, last week I was able to participate in a legislative roundtable with the chiefs of Waukesha County where we met with lots of our elected officials from the state. If you haven't been paying attention to it uh, in terms of revenue sharing with the state, that is something that the the police chiefs in Waukesha County are advocating for uh, because we're running into the same issues with levy caps and those type of things to help budget for specifically for protective services. So it is something that is uh, um, being pushed through the assembly and Senate and hopefully will pass with the governor's uh, signature. But at this point, we're still an unknown. Citizens Academy graduation occurred last week. It's one of the great benefits uh, that we offer at the city of Muskego is the, it, for citizens to come in and get to learn firsthand what we do uh, in order to uh, create more trust and partnership with the community. Uh, officer Sam Weinkoff, our community resource officer is present uh, and he facilitates those classes and sets those things up. So it was a overwhelming success. I had the opportunity this past Saturday to, uh, well, I, I was being challenged, but I was a little slow, but I, I lit the torch for Special Olympics. Uh, at, at the Muskego High School, which was another great event. Unfortunately, it rained most of the days, um, but I was able to actually get to the finish line and put the torch where we needed to go. Uh, last Friday as well, we had a D.A.R.E. graduation. Some D.A.R.E. graduations are gonna occur here in the spring, and I had it at St. Paul's. If you're not familiar with the D.A.R.E. program, obviously it's not just about drugs, it's about decision-making and everything from bullying and you know those type of things. And that, our two middle school SROs are the ones that facilitate that program. They're the ones that train, so they both do their middle schools, and then they also do the parochial schools here in Muskego. Uh, our awards, our annual awards ceremony, if you, you should have been invited, is uh, tomorrow evening at 6 p.m., and that's both for uh, employees of the police department and other community members that do great and wonderful things. On Wednesday, we have an emergency op uh, operation exercise and the, the fire department's taking the lead on this scenario this year. Uh, we kind of have been doing this annually since Mayor Petfalski put it out of like trying to operate in a big picture, either emergency, disaster, or something that, you know, that we collectively need to get together in a room and kind of work through a specific problem. Uh, last year, we did a weather event. This year, uh, we're gonna be doing a, a fire event, clearly, if the fire department's gonna take the lead on that. I'm pleased to report the Citizens Academy Alumni Association, I'm gonna go back to that for a second, uh, have been, if you've seen them around at Pick and Save or other events at Walmart this weekend, they've raised over $10,000 for the Citizens Academy Alumni Association for, and that's 
like if you know your 501c3s, all of the profit from that comes directly back to the police department, that we work collaboratively on like kind of a wish list to, to be able to get things for officers and uh, to better the Muskego Police Department specifically in the raffling of an e-bike. And we got those e-bikes through uh, also a donation, but we took one of the e-bikes that we got and used it for this raffle. So that's been going well. And we sent several officers to e-bike or bicycle training this past week so that I'm hopeful that you're going to see a little bit more of uh, bicycles because it's, you know, part of our com community policing initiative. It can go places where other things really don't go and gives us a, another great opportunity to meet with the people. Our road it was approved for jamming on Janesville. We are going to close that down again. And, it, and I know that it is painful uh, for a short period of time, but in the grand scheme of things, I think it is a safer event uh, because it is one of my worst nightmares having done that as police chief the first year of all the people that were going back and forth. And it is a pain. However, I believe it's in the best interest of the community and where they're going to continue to grow that event. Other than that, any questions? Thank you, Chief, and thank you, Scott. Unfinished business, there is none. Uh, new business, AJ's Car Wash Public Improvements Approval. So, um, AJ's, this is the car wash that's on the west side of, Mor of Moreland, just uh, north of Northern Gear. Um, they have a land disturbance permit. They're already working on their, they got the erosion control set up. They are working on their footings. Um, their plans are into being reviewed for their actual building. We are at a point now that they've done two engineering reviews and we are good with them to kind of giving them um, approval for their engineering contingent as, as all city staff has comments have been addressed. So I'm just looking for uh, approval for you guys uh, on their plans. So move to approve. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Um, the next one, yep. Box One Reserve HOA request for median removal. Um, Aaron, are you able to slide up the screen a little bit and let's get to the kind of a good picture of what's going on right there. Okay, so we've gotten a request by the HOA. Um, the request came in about uh, last fall and they have now made a formal request through Public Works and Safety. There is a little tiny median right there. You can see in your pictures. Uh, it's very small. Um, the HOA, and there's a representative here that can, would like to talk about it as well. Their request is to have this removed. Um, it's very small. Uh, they, it's hard to maintain the trees in there. They feel it doesn't have any purpose and just remove it to pavement. So city staff, we went through the whole thing. We're okay with it as long as the city pays nothing to do this work. That means they hired a qualified contractor, we're okay with it. Um, we have our city inspectors out there, they put in the right backfill, they pave it the correct way, and we have about a year warranty. This is no different than any other typical development that we would do. But we have no, we don't have a problem with them doing it as long as the city has, pays nothing for this. So that, that, that's, I checked with DPW, I checked with utilities, I checked with everyone. So that's, that's kind of our stance on it. Um, I'd like for her to request this and ask. Um, just talk to, you, talk to them and ask them what, what you feel like you want to do and, and why you're doing this. So, yes, you, you have to do. Please just give us your name and your address. Uh, that's all. All right. Yeah. My name is Mary Schills, S-C-H-I-L-Z. My address is S90W12937, Boxhorn Reserve Court, and I am um, on the HOA board. I am an HOA member, there are three of us, but it seems like it's fallen on me to <laughs> take this charge on. Um, the residents, we have many of them that come to us complaining about the lack of the ability to park. As you can see, the two houses on either side cannot park in front of their homes because the median is there. So there's no right of way for people to get through if they were to park in front of their homes. Um, we've had um, several times, um, one of the neighbor's cars, when he parked on the street, not by the median, just passed it, his car was hit. Once it was sideswiped, took his mirror off. Another, I think someone backed out from the neighbors and 
dented his pit or his driver's side door. So no one wants to see that. Um, it's unfortunate for that family to not have access to be able to park near their home or in front of their home. Um, I did send pictures, I think, when a contractors, contractors were at the house on the right. They were parking on the grass with their trailers, their trucks, because there was no place to park unless you were going like a, a one or two houses down to um, park. And then, you know, that's not easy to get at your materials, your tools, and, and what you need. So it is hard for those people. So that is our first um, issue. Um, and I guess the other one is is just the safety involved. Um, I wouldn't mind, you know, working on planting, pulling weeds, putting mulch, but I don't want to be right where the cars are. I mean, there is no room. The cars are coming right there, and if I'm bent down doing weeds, you know, I've, I'm not doing that. So um, it, it just seems very narrow. We do have a lot of walkers that are going by, and when a car comes, they're running off to get on the grass so that they don't get hit, because sometimes the cars come around from Boxhorn into the subdivision, and they're just used to coming in and, and going, and when there's a pedestrian there walking a dog or pushing a, a baby in a stroller, that's, you know, a little bit unsafe, we feel, as the residents there. Um, so that's another safety issue, and that's another reason why we would like to see this median removed. Um, and then the last one is just that everything has died in there except for one tree with the road salt and the pavement all around it. Putting vegetation in that is a challenge. Now I understand we will do it, and we will have to maintain it and replace it. Right now it looks awful, so depending on the decision here, you know, that will give us the... Um, guidance to move forward to replant. Um, maybe I can get help. I don't know what department that would be on what plants can take the road salt spray, what would be good for that area um, if we do have to replant it. But um, I guess the only other um, concern I had was the city does have to um, do repairs to that curbing around there as the snow plows will often hit it and it gets damaged. I don't know how expensive that is, but removing the median would save the city money in the long run, not having to do that kind of, of repair. So those are our biggest um, concerns. The HOA does not have the money to do this, I'm sure. I have no idea how much it's going to cost. Um, I did reach out to Merritt Asphalt here in Muskego to try to get an estimate, and he said there is no way he could give me an estimate until he knows what the city would require in base and depth and how large of a patch they would want. So he felt, get the guidance from the city, then I'll give you a quote. So uh, do you have any idea what we're looking at for dollars? I did a quick estimate of maybe 10 grand. 10 grand? Yeah, maybe. But again, it all depends on, uh, and again, I'm just doing a quick estimate here. Right. It depends um, what they find when they get started. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, is there any way the city could consider splitting the cost with the HOA? Um, and I'm going to say this to staff, we are already tight in our road program. I already lost funds for the road program. Um, I cannot. And this is why is because we're happy where it is. If you want to do this, go ahead, do it. We're okay with it as a city staff, but we just cannot pay for any of this, and that's and that's how we, we look at it right now. So. All right. Um, when the when the road is re what do you call it resurfaced, mm -hmm. and you do repairs to curbing and resurface, is that something that could be could the median be removed when that happens? No, we would just keep the median. We would repair maybe curb and gutter on it if we had to, and then we would just kind of pave right up to the edge of it. Um, we wouldn't try to do any more work than we try to do. We fix drainage, um, but we wouldn't kind of consider it. And your road's looking pretty good compared to the other ones. So that might not happen for a very, very long time. So Is it like a 20, 20 year or something like I, that? I have to check the schedule, but I, I would not. I think it went in in 06, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you're going to wait a long time. Yeah. I'm afraid. I'm just so wanted to be honest with you. So that's not an option either. Um, all right, so it just feels to me, 
maybe for the future, if people are putting in a median in a narrow way, flare out the road, push the road out to allow for through traffic and parking, you just gotta widen it up at that point. I don't know um, if anyone else is considering this in their development, but I would strongly suggest <laughs> that you don't um, do this setup because you could be facing the same complaints from the residents that are there. Um, all right, so we have the, the median and we gotta work around it. Um. Well, you, you don't, they have to still decide, do you want them to vote on letting you do this or not? Because if they do, the stipulation is, you just gotta be at your cost. So you came here to make that request. Would you like them to honor that request as long as they have that contingency on it? Because I hate for you to come back and say, now we want to do it again. What do you, are you just want to drop the, the request? Oh, um, as far as, if I say yes, to get approval, but that's subject to us getting estimates and having the subdivision agree to pay for that. That would be my recommendation to the the the, the people on the board right here. Okay. And um, I don't know what their take is on splitting 50-50. My take and recommendation is not that it would all be on you. Um, I don't know if you want to open up discussion and have the two board people discuss how your take would be on it. Well, we can discuss it. Um, and, and thank you, Mary. Uh, you, you'd be on your own on this one, Mary. Uh, it's really up to you, uh, your subdivision HOA to make any major change like that to the roadway. So I might be in favor of what Scott mentioned. Okay. I agree with that as well. One thing I did have a question on, could a special assessment be assessed to them under and paid back? I don't know if we allow that. No, I, I mean, again, they have their HOA. It's, yep. it's kind of like what, I don't know how you guys charge. I'm sure you probably charge some type of fee already for your HOA. I don't know what the rules are. Every HOA is different, so. We do collect um, assessment fees once a year and um, that cost covers mowing along North Cape Road and the cul-de-sac. Um, and then maintaining the planting beds. Yeah, and I'm sure also through your HOA, you have to have a certain amount of vote for new things or to take on like this as well. Right. So. Okay. Um, One, another question I had or comment is, if and when that is removed, and this might be for Chief, do you maybe foresee people taking that corner a little bit faster because now it's gone? I know, um, I have thought about that myself. If it's not there, will cars come in even quicker than they do now? Because I've had a complaint in another subdivision where, you know, usually it's high school kids, right? Yeah. So they just take the corner fast to and from school. Yeah. You know, when they pull into their street or, or out. So I guess that would be my only concern. And, you know, I guess time would only see on that. But that that would be my only concern if it's not there that, you know, it becomes more dangerous with people driving faster around there. Okay, well then I guess what we would do is if it is approved, um, I would go back to the residents and they would have to vote on um, whether or not they want to absorb that cost to do it. Would you consider shortening that? Because that's quite a long stretch and it does. Yeah. yeah, that might be an option to just take out half of it. Because then the traffic wouldn't be a traffic issue right. coming around that corner and yeah, other other than the home on the left, which has got some problems as far as parking there anyway, yes. um, that might provide a little bit more room. You know, and pulling out, if they have a boat or a large trailer or anything, it's going to be difficult to yes. pull out with that yeah. yes. median there or turn into their driveway with that. And yes. Yeah, so it's just, I, I could see that as well. So I would do that as an option, is get an estimate. Okay, how about if, how long is that? How you know, long is that? No, I do not know uh, that. It looks to be about 60 feet. 50, 60 feet, it's a, it, it seems quite a, quite yeah, a lengthy. Yeah, if you took out like half of it or two thirds, I would get an estimate on that as well and yeah. see what the cost is on That's that. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. All right. Half removal. <clears throat> is it possible to make a motion that just says we, we are willing to let you do that either in full or in part at your expense? 
to city Please standards, standard. of course. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. To city yes. standards. Yeah. Yes, I understand. Okay, well, I'll make that motion. I'll second it. More right. discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. Motion passes. Thank you. Next item. Temp All right. Nope. Temporary no parking signs on Edgewater Heights Way. And Aaron, let's get a good couple pictures here. Okay, first, this is Edgewater Heights Way right here. So it's the subdivision right across from the high school. Well, the high school is under construction. And what we're running into is a, a couple people are um, students have been parking probably in that first kind of off road there, that first one. Then when you come in, it's the dead end right there. Edgewater crossing. Yeah. Right? So what, what we're having is, is we're seeing it now. School's going to be out mid June, so it's not going to be a problem during summer. But it's going to be problem back again when the, until construction's done. Okay. So we are looking and trying to figure out and what we can do. Whatever I suggest we do is temporary, and it means temporary just during the high school construction. Once the high school construction is done, I, I don't feel like there should be any, no parking signs or anything in this subdivision because I, I feel like it, there has been any complaints. It's just happened with the construction of the high school. And I believe there's a resident here, but I, I believe this is my understanding. I don't think anyone has ever gotten a complaint about it. So one of the ideas, Aaron, if you can go back, and I don't know if you can zoom in that picture of that sign a little bit there. So this is one that's on Racine and it says, no parking Monday through Friday was at 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. So what's that done is kind of put it in the area around the school and in subdivisions around the school. And what that says is Monday, Friday, when the school, 7 to 9 a.m. when they arrive, you can't park during this time period. OK, so if you would consider something temporary, something like this, I think, works really well. Um, at least we have found that it's worked for the other subdivisions that are near um, the high school and along Racine. It, it makes your kids not going to come after 9 a.m. because school's already started. So they're already kind of like that. But we also can in increase the time to 7, 10 a.m. The issue though, and again, is we start doing this, I don't want to take the parking away from residents. And that's always been the big issue because they're going to have parties and everything like that. It shouldn't be a problem during the summertime. But this is gonna happen for all school year when we start up in fall. We're almost done with this with this kind of end of the school, but I wanna work with the resident here and what's the best way to do it because I really don't want to sh shut them down where I can't have parties, graduation parties, birthday parties and stuff like that. So we're here just to kind of discuss some idea options of it. Um, the chief said he had a people that went and, and visited the site too. Um, any big issues that you saw during the time period? Over the last 10 days, we've uh, logged at least five different checks of the area. Uh, most of were parking on the edge water crossing mm -hmm. uh, yeah. like that you saw there specifically. Uh, clearly when we have an officer there, the, the, the people that are not doing certain things that kind of subsides if there's a squad car sitting there. So we didn't find any actual violations or parking violations because currently it is legal to park there. Um, it's just a matter of if we choose to do something temporary, I need a sign to be able to enforce uh, something. Sure. The other thing too is my fear is if we just do that one road, it might just keep going back into the cul-de-sac as well um, because it's not that much further. If you kind of see, it's, it's just the one side road and then the cul-de-sac and that's all there. So there would be no reason why because there's no, no parking signs the rest of it. They would just kind of keep moving down too. So I think whatever you want to do, you probably want to, kind of besides that the side road that dead ends is kind of do the whole cul-de-sac as well. Um, so that's kind of what, why we're here. Um, does the resident want to name just, and yeah. tell any more that I didn't, I thought I captured everything that, sure. okay. Yeah, um, just in the last month and a half. If we could have your just, name and your Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm You're Samantha. Crystal, right? Oh. No, I'm oh. Samantha. Oh, Samantha. I got you on the phone a couple okay. of times. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Name and address. That's it. Um, Samantha Breidenbach, uh, South 88 West 18209 Edgewater Heights Way. Um, so I am actually the very first house on the right. So my driveway is the only driveway on that side, dead end street. Um, so we've had a lot of issues just with um, speeding, countless people on our lawn, um, students chasing other students um, on foot, um, cars blocking each other purposely, um, a lot of honking and yelling at each other. So it's just, it's gone from being a very quiet street to it's kind of a zoo. Um, and this is not just 
um, when school lets out, this is in the morning, this is in the middle of the day, and when school lets out. So um, going back to the sign that you had showed, um, the only concern I have with it being a two hour, seven to nine, that parking is we do have students that come after nine o'clock. They must have different schedules. Um, so we have, I know a couple cars that park there pretty often, they don't show up until 9.30 and then they're parked there the rest of the day. So um, they're kind of come and go all day. Um, so I guess we're just kind of, mainly for me, the issue I've seen is that Edgewater crossing the side street. I have not really seen a lot of cars on Edgewater Heights way, but like you said, if they put the parking, no parking on Edgewater Crossing, then they're probably just gonna end up on Edgewater Heights. So um, yeah, so just looking for something, like you said, I agree, we haven't really had any issues um, besides when construction started. So it's really just for, as the high school is being you know, worked on. And I know I've been there through a couple times and they do park right adjacent to your driveway yeah we i mean we've seen issue, so. the garbage trucks have issues getting in mm -hmm. there we've had issues pulling out in the morning um so uh, honestly I, I for me that side street i'm the only driveway there i mean we we don't utilize the street parking we i mean we would rarely need it um so i i'm all for whatever you want to put on that side the, the dead end street that's you know, that's um, anything will be helpful to what's there now. Great. Thank you, Samantha. Okay. How long, you, you mentioned mid-June, is that when the school year ends? That, that, that sounds about right, yeah. And then when they start coming back, like right after Labor Day usually? They're gonna start earlier this year. Okay. Okay. What do you think, Bob? <laughs> what about doing it the whole school day? To, you know, I'm not usually a fan of no parking signs, but these are temporary or I, seven to noon. I think a very simple two hour parking could alleviate a lot of your other concerns. Because yeah. that would require the student to, if they park there, they would have to come back and move their car. And so a two hour parking still allows parking still, you know, but you couldn't keep your car there all day. I, Samantha, I'm kind of asking you, like I just sent this note over to Scott that yeah. kind of would solve the problem. And that's pretty, a, that's a common signage that we investigate. How hard is enforcement? Do you understand from the two hours to your controls and put up time to go around this control? They would have to double check and, you know, like basically we log it and you would go through there and then officer, Weinkoff would be one that would be putting the extra patrol on it if there was an issue, and then they would come back and, okay, the, the car's still here, and then basically, in other municipalities, you would see the chalk on the tire. Uh, we really don't do the chalk, but it'd be digital um, recording, basically. And this would be only for that period of time while the, while the construction is... Correct. Well, while the construction of the high school, as soon as the construction of the high school is done, they should be all be removed. There, there's like Samantha said, there's been nothing. I haven't heard anything with that cell division about sure. parking issues or anything. Um, and and it, I mean, kids are smart. I mean, they, they, they it was it didn't take them long to find out another location. So um, yeah, and and again, if you just do the side street, they're just gonna go around the corner. I, it's true. So how long would it take to get? signs should we approve this um right now that's one of our issues we, we are having a long time getting signs made up mm -hmm. so again if you put the request we'll we can get them in i don't know if we'll be up before the end of the school year or if we are it's going to be like two weeks or something but um again you know you're only talking like a month probably left of school and right now some of our signs are taking six to eight weeks so again but if you do the approval we'll get them ready and then we'll get them up in the fall. I, I, again, I don't think you'll have a problem in the summertime, and that's my opinion. If you do, just, and you pass it, let me know, and then we can get, kind of get them up, but um, if this passes. But I, I feel like if this passes, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of go through it, and then in the fall, we'll get them up. That's at least from our standpoint of getting them. I, Samantha, I do have a question for you. Uh, special events, obviously the, the PAC is used there. 
I've seen it before. Does it is it a problem normally during special events, or is it just more so the school day? Thank you. Thank you. It will be an issue for graduation because they lost all that property in bats, so they're going to go somewhere. But those are one time events, not a daily occurrence, so. I'll make a motion to approve the temporary no parking signs from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Is that going to be adequate? I would rather do the two-hour one that the chief said. I think that'll work better. Be so just, just two-hour parking. Two-hour two hour parking. Two-hour parking. Because what it does is kids come halfway back, co-ops and stuff like that. So I think that, that will work better. From the same time then, seven to No, no, just, okay. You only are allowed two-hour parking. And if you are, for example, um, people with parties and events, you know, I think they'll be able to work around that um, for the people in the neighborhood. So, <clears throat> I'll second it. Other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay. New business. <laughs> Just one, one second, Sam, again, for your neighbors. On a two hour parking, uh, if there's ever the, those, those onesies and twosies of, hey, I need to park overnight. We handle that all the time where like we give permission to kind of, okay, we're going to park cars out on the street. We got this, we got something going on, a graduation party, those type of things. Uh, just call the police department and ask for permission. Would those be just during school days or? Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, that's fine. And that way, the weekends are clear and yep. evenings are. Yeah. We okay. need a motion to amend. Sure. <laughs> <coughs> I'll make a motion to amend the two hour, two hour parking to just school days. And I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? That passes. Okay. Uh, new business placed on file. There is none. Miscellaneous communications uh, business is authorized by law. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>